Welcome back, everyone. Today we're doing Proverbs chapter one, part of that chapter, and this will be Proverbs uh, devotion number six. And today we're going to talk about basically where you can find wisdom. You can find it anywhere because it's all about you crying out. Back in the day when I was raising two girls and my wife, they would like to go shopping a lot. In fact, I spent a lot of time watching movies like um, you know, Sweet Home Alabama, uh, you know, uh, Where the Home Is. I saw a lot of girly kind of movies because I was wise and I wanted to spend time with them. But what I also had to do was sit in malls for a long time and you know, I can go through a sporting goods store in probably 10 minutes, but you know how women are. They can go through stores and store after store after store. So what did I do? I did people watching. And in watching people, you often can tell a lot about the people by the types of stores that they're in. You also look at their countenance. You see how sad or happy or self-absorbed they are, how mean, how fit. Uh, you could see them even putting masks on, acting a certain way that you know they wouldn't really want to act, but they're doing it because their friends are there. Sometimes you see, or no, today you see a lot of that probably, there were some homeless people, some people that were desperate, some panhandlers, all of these people just walking around in their own world and absorbed. But I wasn't absorbed because I would study my Bible and look up and I would see somebody and I would think about uh, them and you can learn a lot about them. You could tell which one is stuck up <laughs> and you could tell which one is humble. So when you look closely enough, you can really discern wisdom. And I'm going to give you an illustration now from chapter one of Proverbs, where it says this, wisdom cries aloud in the street, in the marketplace, she raises her voices. At the head of a noisy street, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. So wisdom is all about you. When you look at these people, are they happy? Are they sad? And I saw more self-absorbed, unhappy people or prideful people, which you know is going to run into unhappiness, than I seen people who seem to be just at peace with themselves. And this is God's heart now What I'm going to read to you. How long? He's talking to these kind of people that don't have God in their life. They're running around a store trying to fill a need. And God gave me wisdom on this the other day. If I had everything I wanted, anything that I can do, anywhere I can go, if I had unlimited money and access, how long would I want to live? You actually see this problem in Hollywood. Because if you don't have the center of God in your life, would you want to live forever? Why do I want to live forever? Why would anybody want to live forever? It's because I have a heart for God and God has a heart for me. And I love serving. 70 years old, doing things with kids. It's a blast. And as long as I'm physically able, it is such a blessing. So when you look around and you see people aimlessly going nowhere or just buying things to fill themselves, you know that deep inside they are lonely. You see, in fact, you used to see a lot of people like that, that these lonely hearts put themselves in the midst of a group to feel like they're something and they're still lonely even in the midst of these people. So... The thing is this, God loves you so much and wants that relationship with you. He wants you to know him so that your burden would be light and that you would be happy in him. Teenager, young adult, adult, a little kid, doesn't matter. If you feel unhappy, don't feel like you need to go into a shell. Instead, go into the heart of God. God says this, when my mother and father forsake me, the Lord will lift me up. God has given me that burden to lift others up. Even if I can't lift everyone up, I can encourage people and I can do things to lift other people up. Here's God's promise. If you turn at my reproof, behold, 
I will pour my spirit in you, and I will make my words known to you. Hear God's voice. He doesn't want you to be fearful. He doesn't want you to be lonely. He wants you to be consumed with him. And he promises here to make his known words known to you and direct your path. So until next time, may Jesus increase as we decrease.